Well, hi there, and welcome at another episode on TypeScript design patterns. And in this module, we'll be discussing the decorator pattern. So when we look at the definition, it states that it attaches additional responsibilities to an object dynamically. And decorators provide a flexible alternative to subclassing for extending functionality. So uh, sometimes you cannot subclass because, for example, in uh, .NET, the class is from an external library and it is sealed. So in that way, you cannot inherit that class. But sometimes you do want to extend functionality. And the decorator pattern is a very uh, oftenly used pattern to do so. Uh, there are uh, multiple variations on that, and, but in this module we'll be discussing the extended version. So if we look at the UML class diagram, let's say we have a component, and this component can be a class which lies outside of our uh, own application. So we have this component that comes from a third-party library and uh, this component does have an interface. In this case, uh, the component is just the interface or an abstract, and the concrete component here has also this operation. We then create a decorator, and what a decorator does, most of the times it implements the exact same interface or extends the, or inherits the exact same uh, abstract class as the uh, component it is trying to decorate okay and that is very important for the application that uses a decorated class uh, there's no distinction between using a decorated class or the class itself so if we use the decorator we have the same operations as we should would have on the operation uh, on the concrete object itself Okay, so we have a component, which is the interface or an abstract. We have the concrete component and we have the decorator and they all have the same operation method. So uh, what we then can do when we have a decorator, which has all these same properties, because in this case, it's just operation, but a lot of components have a lot, of mo lot more properties and methods. But in this case, we have the decorator. We can then create a concrete decorator that actually adds behavior to the component. So a concrete decorator, decorator A, can, for example, add state. It will still, of course, because it inherits the decorator, it will still have the operation method. And the oper operation method will still call the concrete component's operation. Right? When we create a second decorator, concrete decorator B, it will add, for example, the edit behavior. As we can see right here, the operation will just call base operation, which is this one, but this one will also call base operation if possible, or call the uh, injected concrete components operation method. And I will show you that in the uh, example. So when we go to the example, we head to Visual Studio again. What we see here is we have a third-party library, and the third-party library has an interface, and the interface is called library item. And a library item has uh, a property and a method defined, the property copies, and a display method. We then have several, uh, we first have a base class, the library item, which implements iLibrary, and of course has the copies, a getter, and a setter, and also a display to uh, display the item. In this abstract class, of course, again, TypeScript does not really have a notion of abstract classes, but uh, because of that, we just throw an error in the display. Okay. Then we have a book, which extends library item. Of course, as such implements iLibrary item, calls its base class, sets the copies, and has an implementation for the display. We then have a video also extends library item and as such implements i library item the copies and the display so we set the copies and we change the display method so this is our third party library where we have just some classes and uh, let's pretend we cannot inherit from these classes so how would you then add extra functionality to these classes so 
what we first what I first did is I created a decorator and the decorator says okay uh, in this case I use generic I, uh, I tell it to have a type which extends third-party lib library item but it also implements third-party lib dot I library item and what we do here we have an object the object that we wrap so to call so to say and this object we pass in a constructor so we set the I, uh, library item T. And for all the methods that are defined in I library item, what we do, we have to implement those methods and properties. But what we do, we actually call back to the I li the library item that is passed on in the constructor. So our own decorator does not have any own state besides the library item that it is decorating. A call to copies calls the library item that is passed. A call to display calls the display method of the library item that is passed. So when we uh, look at a concrete decorator, the borrowable decorator, we did make some changes. So what we do, first of all, inside the constructor, we do get a library item, okay? And we call the base superclass to set the library item. This means because it extends this decorator, it will still have the same methods as the book and the video do because they have the iLibrary item. But then again, we also add some extra methods. We say we, you can borrow an item. And when you borrow an item, we just push the name of the borrower into the, uh, to the list of borrowers, array of borrowers, and we set the copies. We deduct the copies with one. When somebody returns an item, we of course need to remove its name from the borrowers list and we add to the copies that we have in stock and then the display we call the super display when we call the super display which is this decorator it will call the library items display but we add the borrowers and the name of the borrowers okay so the decorator base class will have just the same interface as the items that we are decorating the iLibrary item interface so we can call use this decorator as we could use any iLibrary item and the borrowable we can also use that one as we could use any library item but we also added extra functionality of borrowing the item when we look at our load method over here we have a book which is a third-party library book and we display the book but what we then do we create a new decorator, a concrete decorator, borrowable, and we inject the book inside our borrowable. What we can then do is we can say borrow a book, borrow item, add another item, uh, borrow another item, and then we display it. So when we start with 10 copies, I expect the output to say that we have just eight copies left, right? So we then have a video, which is a new third party library video. And we display the video. The video at this moment is not borrowable. What we can then do, indeed, we, we can then create a new concrete borrowable decorator and we inject the video right now. And with that, our vi video is now borrowable. So let's look at the output, what it looks like. When we scroll down over here, we have a book really inside asp.net that's it and we have copies of 10. we then have a, you decorate the book by borrowable and we borrow two items when we then display it again first of all we see that the copies indeed went down to eight but we also have two borrowers borrower number one and number two when we scroll down a little bit further we see we have a video video by mr spearberg joel's Playing time is 23 minutes and we have 92 copies in place. When we then use decorate the video by borrowable, we can then borrow the video. And when we add two borrowers and we output the, uh, we display the video again, the copies left are 90 and we have indeed a video borrower one and number two. So in that way, we could extend a third party library 
by decorating it and injecting the object inside our decorator. So the, the borrowable can be used in exactly the same way as we could use an iLibrary item, but it does add extensions to the object. And that's how you use the decorator.